If they're all the same height, they're all severing wood fiber at the same time. Right. They're all engaged. So when you have consistent engagement, a consistent set from a rigid retention of little tooth line, that's what makes a bad axe cut like it's on rails. The reason if you go on eBay and you buy an old vintage saw and you see that little wiggle on the tooth line, it's because it was dropped. There's usually a little chip on the upper corner signifying that it was dropped. And perhaps that back is crammed down on that saw plate. And you can see where there is an air gap between the top of the spine and the inside pole. Mm -hmm. That's deliberate. You want that air gap to be there. Hmm. Um, that whole shiftability and that teeter-totter effect is what redistributes the clamping tension along the spine, thereby straightening out the tooth line. Hmm. Now, why is that important? You're cranking on a piece of wood, your elbow's swinging out, you just got more technique, or maybe you loaned it out to a friend, or you're teaching somebody. After a while, you're going to ask more of that saw than what was intended to do. You're going to look in there, you're going to see a little wiggle. That's because the plate shifted inside the saw back. And that's better than tearing or kinking the plate. This one Okay? Because after a while, you take any scatting out of the saw that's been well used for a couple of years, you're going to see something there and you can't do a darn thing about it. Hmm. Those saws will be in the trash heap long before the traditional saw, the traditional design of the saw. We hammer set the teeth. And people don't understand the value of a hammer set. We're dealing with spring steel here, right? And would you hold your arm up like this, really, and make it really rigid, okay? Now, your name is Spring, okay? Now, if I have a pair of plier sets and I'm trying to bend that tooth to set it, what's that spring steel doing? Spring it's resistant, back. right? Now, if I smack it, dynamically with the hammer, the punch, against the beveled anvil, you're going to perform it into position. What's the difference? If you bent the tooth in place with a plier set, you're not just shaping the tooth, you're also distorting the metal in the gullet. And there's a little dimple. That's kind of like walking through the crowded streets of Manhattan with your elbows stuck out. Mm. You're inviting more friction into the cut. Now, if all you're affecting is the upper half of the tooth, you're going to have an incredibly consistent set that will help your saw cut like it's on rails because of that consistency. Your ability to take ownership on maintaining your saw is the key selling point for a bad horse.